Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming into another video. All right, so I attempted to do a Philadelphia 76 video just now and accidentally pressed the button, so I'm just going to do the old video again. Um, yeah, tonight, Philadelphia 76ers, Los Angeles Lakers. It's going to be at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific at the Wells Fargo Arena. I believe that's the name of it. And, uh, yeah, the Los Angeles Lakers are going to have to try to find a way to contain Joel Embiid. He's playing MVP-type basketball right now. Um, and... You know, you just have to understand that if you try to go small ball against the Philadelphia 76ers, it could be a historically bad blowout. I mean, it could be really historically bad. The type of rhythm he's in, the type of way he's playing, it, you just do not want to um, take that lightly at all. Now, the thing about it is we have a guy on our team by the name of Dwight Howard who has had a lot of experience playing against Joel Embiid over the last 16 months. Uh, being that he was his backup center last year, I would rely upon him to help me out in game planning and ultimately try my best to contain that great player. Um, the injury report tonight, from what I understand, uh, we're going to be uh, able to 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 not have to face Seth Curry and Shake Milton. Both of those guys will not be out there. Um, Danny Green's questionable. And for us, of course, AD is probable. We do expect for him to be available tonight. So, all in all, uh, this is a game that you don't expect the Lakers to have too much success, but we are as healthy as we've been in a very long time. So, we're very excited about being able to test ourselves at this point to see how we look against one of the elite teams in the Eastern Conference. Um, given the fact that they have a guy by the name of Andre, Andre Drummond as well, someone who's very familiar with us to say the least, uh, we have to be very serious about playing centers and playing size tonight. So, I don't know how we're going to defend against this team if we don't. Uh, rely upon Dwight Howard and Anthony Davis. Even if we have to play Anthony Davis a bit more than we want to and rest him in the next game against Atlanta, I think that would be the only way we can have any shot against this game, against this team. Um, I don't know if I'm looking at this correctly in terms of my the way I see it, <laughs> but I just don't think minutes restriction for, for AD is going to... Uh, be of service to us tonight. I don't think a half of AD is going to give us any more chance than no AD at all. So in my opinion, either we play him all the way or don't play him at all. Cause basically we're going to need him to really, really take on and almost match uh, the, the production of a Joel Embiid in my opinion for us to have a shot. And I just don't know that how he could be able to do that at this stage of his um, coming back, you know, in, in terms of his return. So I understand that we're probably not going to do what it is that I think makes sense. We're probably just going to stick to whatever plan Frank and the guys have in store. And um, we know how that turns out. That that usually doesn't bode well for us. Um, so I, I, I just, you know, this is one of those games where I just kind of chalk it up as a loss, you know. And if the Lakers happen to win it, once again, I'll say it just like I did about the last game that we won in that regard against a good team. It was because they didn't do what they were supposed to do referring to the Jazz, shooting so poorly and allowing us to get a victory in our home. That would be the type of thing that would have to happen tonight. Philadelphia would just have to play poorly. Now, from what I understand, Tobias Harris did miss shoot around this morning, but he was not listed on the injury report just yet, so I'm not sure what's going on there. We'll have to keep our eyes open to see if Tobias Harris will be someone we'll have to defend against tonight, and that's a very big deal. So we're kind of in the dark as it pertains to that particular player. Uh, Forkan Korkmaz is a player who can score a lot being that they're going to be down a couple shooters, I'd expect him to have a big game. And, of course, you do not want to forget about Tyrese Maxey, who's still working his way back into shape uh, after being out for a little bit, I think, with COVID protocol. But he's having a breakout season. He's been absolutely great for the Philadelphia 76ers in the first half of the season. And being that he's had a couple games under his belt since returning, I'd imagine he's going to be closer to 100% tonight than he's been since coming back. So we have to be ready for one of the fastest-footed players one of the best, best young players in the game, in my opinion, in Tyrese Maxey. So all in all, the Los Angeles Lakers are definitely going to have to play hard, play smart, play well, and do all the things that they are not prone to do as a team in order to have any chance against this elite Eastern Conference juggernaut. Um, being that they're undermanned, that does not mean that we're doing, um, but we're just going to waltz in here and get a victory. They got a guy by the name of Matisse Thibel, who I think is one of the best defenders in all of the basketball right now. Um, I don't think they utilize him as much as I would want to utilize him because of his defense, offensive deficiencies. But all in all, you're going to find seven players in this league that are going to defend 
the perimeter better than him. He's just very, very gifted defensively, very intelligent defensively, and he makes his money on that side. I look at him as a Shane Battier type of guy who's just going to lock people up the longer they play him. So this is one of those situations where, like I said, the matchup isn't great. Um, they got a guy by the name of George and Yang who also contributes pretty well. I'd expect him to give them about 10, 12 points tonight as well. Uh, they're just a very, very talented team with a lot of size, balance and shooting. Uh, the one thing that you can say about them, though, is that they don't have the greatest run offense because they don't really have a natural facilitator. Now, on certain nights, you'll find good facilitating play out of them because Tyrese Maxey will make sure that he gets some assists here and there. Of course, Joel Embiid can do all things out there. But ultimately, he's all, he's looking to score, rebound, and block shots. Assist is not really his game, and neither is it anyone else's. So if we can find a way to exploit that somehow, uh, it could be to our benefit. They just don't have the greatest offense in the world, even though they have one of the greatest offensive players, maybe ever. Uh, so Joel Embiid is a seven foot one guard. And you have to understand that he's going to shoot over you. He's going to have amazing footwork. He's going to move with speed. He's going to dunk on you. He can do whatever he wants. He is essentially one of the smartest basketball players in basketball and continuing to get better over as the years progress. He's about as healthy as he's ever been. And I just don't really see us having any shot at kicking his butt tonight. I really don't. I would love to tell you guys, yeah, the Lakers can do it if we just play together. And nah, nah. Nah, Joel Embiid's probably going to drop 50 and 15 on us tonight. And I'm not exaggerating. I expect him to drop 50. And the reason why is because we have nobody to stand in front of him. You know, Anthony Davis is going to have to do it, but we're going to obviously play him minutes restriction because it's the plan rather than adjust to what we see because we know our coach doesn't make those type of adjustments. But um, LeBron James is obviously LeBron James. You don't want to uh, poo-poo the greatest player in the game and what his production is. But being that we get so little production from everywhere else, he just basically provides that, which means we need something else to be extraordinary in order for us to be better than just average, even if he goes for his 30 and 7-7. Seven and seven. So with that being said, Russell Westbrook's going to be a very important piece tonight. He's going to have to play well. He's going to have to keep his turnovers down. He's going to have to somewhat match the intensity of a guy like Tyrese Maxey um, because Tyrese is going to run it straight down our throats. He, like I said, he's one of the fastest players in basketball, and he's not going to chill on trying to defeat us. I just know he's going to see this as an opportunity to attack a weak defense. Um, Stanley Johnson's going to be important tonight. We're going to need to rely upon him to help defend in the perimeter, to help fend off some of what they're going to be doing shooting the ball because we really don't have nothing, no answer for it. Uh, Joel Embiid. So my thing is, let Joel go off, see if Joel can score 100 points, we outscore them. But defend everyone else. That should be our po our focus. Um, Lakers tend to switch too much. You can't switch against a team like this. You try that nonsense, you're going to find small people on Joel Embiid and he's going to eat. Even if you have big people on Joel Embiid, I expect him to eat. So at this point in time, I will would like the Lakers to try to revise their scheme and just try to stay home a little more than they allow themselves to. We try to switch so much, and it really doesn't help us. First of all, our team is not that good at it. Those reads often go wrong, and so it would probably just be better to try to stay put and fight around screens. Uh, so uh, I, need, I need my guy Austin Reeves to score the ball tonight. I love what he does in other areas. His five offensive rebounds were unbelievable because they were the only rebounds we had in that side of the ball. Uh, his assists were really helpful, but he only had two points. The game before that, I think he had like two points. He needs to score the ball. We're going to have to find him some ways to get some layups, and he's going to have to knock down his three-point shot. If we can't get scoring production out of areas where we don't usually get scoring production, we're probably going to get blown out. Uh, Malik Monk's coming off a really good game where he shot excellent. Uh, we're going to need that to continue. Uh, THT was especially horrible in the last game. We need to not allow him to be that. His production is important, but if he's struggling the way that he was, you got to cut the cold hand off. Um, funky lineups, starting lineups and stuff like that, we just can't afford to have happen tonight. This is a very important basketball game. This is not the Brooklyn Nets without KD and Kyrie. This is not the Utah Jazz shooting 20% from the three-point line. This is a team that should be wide awake for LeBron James coming into their house. They're going to treat this like it's a playoff game, and they know they're better than us. They don't think it. They know it. So what they need to do is just overpower us and push us out the way, which means what we need to do is play smarter basketball than we're prone to play, which is why I was hoping the Lakers would have fired this man by this game. But they have not fired Frank Vogel, so we're still going to deal with whatever the heck he decides and whatever the heck he sees uh, to not you know, make adjustments and things of that nature. It's just it's not going to work against a team like this. 
You know, single coverage against Joel Embiid is not going to work. It's not going to work. It's a small ball against this team is a laughable. They're going to blow us out by 60. Like, this is how bad this could potentially be if the Lakers go in as business as usual. It's just not going to work. Um, so, yeah, this this is one of, the, one of the more pessimistic matchups of the entire season for me. As soon as I saw it on the on the on the uh, schedule, I was pretty much saying chalk this one up as a loss. But I can tell you this. This is the only hope I really have. Most of the time when I'm this sure the Lakers are going to lose, they make a game out of it. A lot of times when I'm this adamant about the Lakers just absolutely getting a loss, they find a way to win. So for whatever, for whatever that's work, worth, I'm hopeful that will be the case. Um, continuing on, Trevor Ariza should not play tonight. He shouldn't play at all. Should have waved him a long time ago. Um, I'm not playing no more. I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to be nice about this team. We only got 19 games left. It's not the time to be nice and kind. It's time to make things happen. And the Lakers, few, you know, are, are dragging their feet, and the season's almost lost. Um, so that's what I'm on. I think Avery Bradley should not be starting at all. But I do like some of what Avery Bradley has done, so I don't want to waive him. That's about it. Uh, that's This is the game you shrink your bench. It, those guys that are on those $1.2 million contracts, they should not get in the game unless they start the game hot. When you put them in the game, if they're not hitting shots and they're not defending, you got to go back to the seat. you got to play the youngsters tonight. You lean more on Malik Monk. You lean more on LeBron James because those were the two guys that got you the victory in the last game. If you're not going to play AD all his minutes, again, just sit him for the whole game. Just sit him because him going in and out of the lineup and in doing so, having to guard Joel Embiid, that is bad. That's very bad. First of all, you don't want players going in and out of the lineup because they never get their legs about them. It's too much start and stop, start and stop. We know that can bring about the worst of things. So, like I said, this is the game you sit AD if you're not going to give him his 30-plus minutes. And I can't stress that enough. Either you're going to play him all or don't play him at all because I'm telling you, his presence ain't going to be enough unless he's 100% and getting full minutes. Joel Embiid is not the guy you come in after sitting for 10 minutes and try to guard. Period. So, that's what I got, man. It's a lot to say about the Lakers as it pertains to the trade rumors that are going on out there. You got the Russell Westbrook for John Wall in the 27th pick, which is absolutely something the Lakers should not even consider. They got a rumor going around that Terrence Ross and, and a couple picks will get Russell Westbrook off our hands and send him to Orlando. I don't believe that. It makes no sense for the Orlando Magic. But the point is the rumors are starting to swirl around that the Los Angeles Lakers have been shopping Russell Westbrook. And the only reason, according to these rumors, is optics. Now, I don't know what that is supposed to entail. Obviously, they, that means they don't like way, the way it looks in trading Russell Westbrook. But I think that's bullcrap. I think that's just them basically telling us a lie in regards to uh, this situation. The truth is they can't find a deal that makes any sense, so they can't get rid of him. That's all that means. So all this talk about optics, they would pull the trigger immediately and let it look like whatever it looks like. Don't be fooled. Real Laker fans know they want to trade Russell Westbrook just as bad as we want him gone because that contract is a killer of our cap. And no matter how great he plays, we're going to always have issues surrounding ourselves with the right talent we need and the flexibility we need going forward if that contract's attached to those two superstar players, LeBron and AD. So got to get rid of it no matter what. But no matter what does not mean no matter what necessarily because we start, definitely don't want to swap a worse contract for Russell Westbrook. Unlike what Skip Bayless is telling us to do. That is not a addition by subtraction. It's actually a stupid decision. Don't do it. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at, man. That's where I'm at. That's what I think of this whole situation. Los Angeles Lakers, again, have 19 games left in the season. And um, in the middle of a very tough road trip. But so far, I can honestly say we've fared better on this road trip than I thought. So that's a very good thing. Uh, hopefully we can go into Philadelphia and not demoralize ourselves by playing poorly. I want to see us go up against this team and make them backpedal, make them stay on their toes, make them force force them into turnovers. That's going to be the key. If you can force the Philadelphia 76ers into making 15 or more turnovers, I think we can give ourselves a shot to make a game out of this thing. But if they're taking care of the basketball and with their rebounding the ball, which they're definitely going to do with two of the best centers that rebound the ball in Drummond, and Joel Embiid. If you think you're going to have any success against them rebounding the ball, you just might want to go look at the tape from the previous game when we went up against, or who was it that we just played? Whoever it was we just played, and they got us on the boards. It was Brooklyn, and they destroyed us on the board with role players. So um, this is a game where you expect us to get even eight up on the boards even more. Unless, again, we played Dwight Howard and played 
AD his full amount of minutes. You can make up for playing him his full amount of minutes if you sit him in against Atlanta, which is probably the move. Because like I said, if we can't have size on the floor against Philly, you might as well not even go out there. You might as well just stay your butts in the locker room. Stay on the go, Just fly straight to Atlanta. If you're not going to play any size tonight, Frank, just skip Philly entirely. Forego the game. Let them have the W so everybody cannot risk getting hurt in this game tonight. And we can just go on to Atlanta and play against a team we can actually compete against. Because I'm telling you, Joel Embiid is licking his chops. He's probably getting an early nap today. He's probably feeling really, really good about this matchup tonight. I would be. In fact, I would think I would want to get my career high against this bad offense, bad defense and bad Laker team. Coming in my building with the King on the team. Now, remember, King had a chance to choose Philadelphia. He chose the Lakers. We're happy he did. We got a championship. But a guy like Joel Embiid probably still feel like LeBron James could have helped him win the championship, too. And given the fact they got all that's going on with Ben Simmons, thank God he ain't playing tonight. We have um, a situation where I'd imagine a Joel Embiid is going to be looking to destroy us. Just like he did two years ago when my lights went completely out and I didn't see the entire game. It was a good thing I didn't because we got blown out by something and he had like 50 points. So this is how it goes. Joel is an MVP candidate, seven foot, seven foot guard who can do anything and everything on the floor, basically. If you don't cater your entire defense to slowing him down, he is going to destroy you. And that is it. Adjustments are necessary, even though we don't expect them. Uh, playing youngsters are necessary, even though we don't expect it. And, uh, you know, adjustments. Not allowing the cold hand to continue to stay out there and destroy the team. Whoever's cold must sit. You have to treat this like a playoff game. In fact, all 19 of these games left are playoff games for us. And so, uh, if we don't approach it with that type of intensity then uh, we, we can find ourselves continuing to lose basketball games. And that's just what it is, man. That's just what it is. My, my hope is that we can just see a game that's worth watching tonight. I don't expect to win, even if it's close, because they're just a lot better than us. But Brown is in a hell of a, ro- a rhythm right now. He's getting his stats. He's making sure that he's, he's taking advantage of the mismatches given to him. He's playing hard. All of the stuff you want to see from the King, but he just doesn't have enough help unless we give ourselves a chance. By doing things that actually make sense instead of the stuff that we're prone to do. My name is BDF44. Everyone enjoy the game. Thank you for watching. I'm out.